Hello, and welcome to another episode of Gimmicky Tech, the series that gives me eternal suffering just so I can inform you of some cards you never heard of. So what's the source of my pain today? Chalmers. Do I need to say more? This archetype is so beyond recovery, Konami couldn't even be bothered saving it with overpowered crap because they know they still wouldn't be able to achieve anything with those tools. Okay, so I might be a little too harsh to Chalmers, but this is an... Well, an archetype I hold close to my heart. Harsh loving is needed when we talk about these cards. So, because this archetype absolutely sucks ass, my goal today is to teach you some, well, somewhat viable deck builds, so they are slightly more bearable when you decide to pick them up during a 3am drunk Yu-Gi-Oh match. But, you know, before we indulge in some underage beatdown tactics, we need to talk backstory with the archetype. Chalmers have a history dating back to 2005 with The Lost Millennium, which was the set that also gave us first wave e-heroes and ancient gears. I'm honestly surprised the first printing of <laughs> a, well, any interest in this archetype 10 feet under. I'm also surprised if anyone tried to play these guys because, let's be honest, 1,500 defense on, you know, a flip monster was pretty weak, even by 2005 standards. Two packs later, in Elemental Energy, we got their familiar possessed forms, and they continue to be bad. And then, you know, two more packs later, in Enemy Justice, we got the somewhat useful Callous Charmer forms. You know, somewhere between then and then 2015, where they got the next piece of relevant support, we got the Dark and Light Charmers, which Konami pretends doesn't exist, the far more useful Familiars, and the Wax Spiritual Arts Traps. 2015 was Charmers' best year in terms of existence, since we got the trap that would carry the deck unpossessed, which made the deck ever so slightly more playable, considering it allowed Charmers the chance to actually survive battles, but not the numerous removal options capable by 2015 standards. 2019 to 2020 was much kinder to Charmers though, since we got their Persuader boss monsters in the form of the Link 2 retrains and their structure deck, bringing in the, well, a big wave of mediocre support which I now have to assess, archetype archive style. But before we move on, I need to give a warning. So, in an attempt to make this funny, here's Ruby Carbuncle doing a silly voice. Hey guys, it's everyone's favourite GX monster, Ruby. Here to talk to you about something very important and close to my heart. If any time during this video be inspired to make a variation of Chalmers, please stop. Please stop the video and reconsider your life choices. Playing Chalmers is not fun experience for anyone. You won't find it fun, your friends won't find it funny, and the guys at locals probably don't enjoy bullying less capable decks. If you feel the urge to play Chalmers, please take a swig of vodka instead. Being drunk will at least make the experience less painful and give you some plausible deniability if someone asks you why you're playing fucking Chalmers. Alright, I've got some other places to be than this shit, so I'm gonna be out. Just remember kids, when you play Chalmers, no one's having fun. Alright, I hope this is good enough, Dean. Fuck you. Beginning with the original six Chalmers, count them six Chalmers. Obviously I'm better at counting the Konami, seeing the pretending liner in dark. Or is it dark? Dark. I don't know how to pronounce it, I'm just going to say dark. Doesn't exist right now. Well, anyway, don't run these guys. Flip effects are slow as fuck, but if you want to try to make them work anyway, run a prediction princess engine at least. Next up is the familiar possessed versions of the gang, and you only currently want to run the main four. While Lina and Drak have very useful effects, those effects are left behind the very dumb special summon conditions all the FP cards have, plus the main four elements are the only ones that work with the new support right now, so yeah, you know, hopefully Lion and Drak will change soon, because seeing how useless they are currently in the deck, but you know, apart from that, these cards are make, well, very respectable beat sticks for level fours, and makes the most viable version of the deck FP beatdown playable due to their level, and how the new support works out in their favour, yeah, it's quite good if you just want to play FP. Run two or three of each of them with ratios depending on how often you want to see them in your deck variations. Next we have the Callous Charmers, and 
they have niche uses. It's a very cute piece of tech in some decks if you need to get your bigger bodies out of your hand. If they made a dark one, it would be pretty good on layer, but the Catalyst Charmers predate the line in Drak releases, so we only got these four, and they aren't any decks that make use of them right now. Like, maybe one day they'll have some relevance in a Table 500 deck, but I hardly doubt it. Moving into the actually good cards of the archetype, we got the Familiars, who make generally good support in any spellcaster archetype. The fact that these guys special summon themselves, providing you have a spellcaster in the field, is great for extending, and they act as their own mini engine with Gigabyte being the searcher, Archfiend popping the Familiars for their effects, Van Ryu resurrecting them, and Inari. Well, Inari is just slow and kind of useless. Despite that, all four of these guys have their place in Charmer builds and many other spellcaster decks. Moving into their brand new Awakening Possessed forms, they are solid one-offs and two of them are debatably not useful in a Charmer deck. Starting from the worst of the best, Inari is just a better cowboy for game. Raisin Ryu is your balance option. Gargigo Bahit, I hate these names, is a good archetypal mind clash and lets you plus on it. And finally, Nefarious Archfiend is your best option for combos. No, seriously, it's really good for Charmer decks. Since all the AP float into back row searches, Nefarious is essentially a free search. The basic combo for it is to summon a spellcaster, special summon the base Nefarious Archfiend, set both as cost to summon AP Nefarious Archfiend. He special summons a level 4 from your graveyard, use both to link summon wherever you want to make, and you know, enjoy your free search of any possessed back row. Their usefulness doesn't just, well, isn't just limited to charming builds, since their cards also search their respective attribute-based spiritual art, making them viable in any decks with spellcasters. Speaking of spiritual arts, they are all low-key kind of useless. Since we are talking about normal traps that require you to tribute a monster with specific attributes, they aren't exactly the best. Greed and Hijiri are useless currently, since they are unsearchable thanks to Konami pretending they don't exist. Kuragan is effectively a graveyard swap, and Kuranai is just a bad burn card. The best ones to run honestly is Aoi, for the hand information and card rip in Mayavi for the bounce. God, I definitely butchered those pronunciations. Anyway, um, these can be solid one-offs if you plan to use the APs in your non-charmer decks, but just keep in mind you have to tribute monsters for their effects, so you are losing board advantage if you don't plan ahead for it. Moving on to the Persuaded Boss Monsters for the Archetype, the Charmer Link V-Trains, and they're mainly one-offs in a Charmer deck. You can side extra copies for certain matchups, but I prefer the one-offs in the main deck since they are already kind of hard to get rid of. Considering these cards are considered both Charmers and Familiar Possessed cards, they get both benefits of Unpossessed and Awakening, making them effectively indestructible and require stuff like bants, bouncing, or back row removal to get rid of them without battle. The fact they also let you steal monsters from your opponent's graveyard, provided you have the right attribute out. The links are just better charmers, and brings the deck up to some level of casual play. It's not exactly a good level, seeing how much of everything else you need to make them decent, but it's there, at least. You know, the thought counts. Moving properly now into their back row lineup, Unpossessed and Awakening of the Possessed are two and three offs respectively. Since Unpossessed is highly searchable now, you can get away with one off, but the threat of back row removal makes it a two off. Unpossessed not only makes sure your charmers are protected by battle, it also boosts the attack of your FP cards when they attack, so they can be respectable beat sticks, because seeing the fact that it's an 800 attack increase, meaning you, your level 4s are hitting an attack of 2650, that's quite a lot for a level 4. And, you know, it also lets you float your monsters, you know, on destruction into other cards, mainly your more familiar possessed cards. Unpossessed is effectively just the backbone of the archetype, 
And if we're going with that analogy, that makes Awakening of the Possessed the arms of the operation, considering it just helps you beat the shit out of the enemy. Yes, the draw on summon is nice and all, but when you stack the 300 attack boost per an attribute you control effect, you can reach real ridiculous heights of beat stick. Overall, these cards are very nice. <laughs> Moving back into the disappointing crap again, Grand Spiritual Art Ichiran. I think I pronounced that right. Anyway, where do I even start with the problems? Let's begin with the fact that it's not searchable in its own archetype, leaving it to be only searchable by stuff like terraforming. Its monster negate effect only works if you have a spellcaster with 1500 defense out, making it useless if you sink all your resources into the link like you should be doing. On top of that is a mandatory negate, putting it at the same level of usefulness as the Magician's Hands cards, so, you know, they're garbage, so you can just, because you can just bait it out. Like, its only good point is the fact it converts your Charmers slash Familiar Possessed cards into, well, Familiars for combos, and that's about it. I think I'd rather use Bluff Reach, or even XYZ Territory, because it will at least have a more proactive effect on their field. Nevertheless, this is a free off for that Familiar Search alone, which really speaks about how bad this deck is. Or, well, at least has it, not... It's both, to be honest, it's just both. Now, leaving the card breakdown on a good note, Spirit Charmers and Possessed Partnerships are good archetypal support cards. That's all I've got to say about them, because if you read them for yourselves, you can see why they are good. But just in case you can't read the cards on the screen, because I don't know, the picture quality is garbage or something, I'll tell you why. Spirit Charmers is a plus one, considering for a discard, you get to search out a monster and a possessed back row card, meaning it's your best option for board setups. Possessed partnerships may look like a boring archetype will be born, but it makes up for it with a card pop and the fact that you can recover your destroyed possessed cards in the graveyard. These cards are respectively free and two offs in any good charmer builds. Now, before we move on, you're probably thinking where are the catalytic cards and Winder the Wind Channeler? Well, first things first, how the hell did you think Catalystic is considered part of the Charm archetype? Is it because on this table on the wiki entry for Charmer list, list them there? Like, because I can tell you now, they aren't part of the archetype. They're just generic attribute cards that happen to have similar effects as the APs. Unless you want to convince me that the Catalystic cards are what happen when the Charmers fuse properly with the Familiars. Because if that's the case, how did Orza turn into... Well, this! This thing right here, what the hell? <laughs> Now, as for Winda, she's really just a charmer in name, and I mean that quite literally because it's in her card text. Considering her job is just to be an attribute searcher that locks you into that attribute in terms of monster effects, she doesn't really fit in charmers, but works best in mono attribute decks, which right now is only wind, because we only have the wind channeler right now. At least you can use her in your new wind witch support if that's, well, any consolidation that the fact you can't play this in Charmers. Okay, so we're going to skip into deck builds mainly because why am I supposed to suggest for t as tech options for any generic Charmer deck? Like, like, do you want me to go like, well, first we have Witchcraft Golem because she can bounce the threat away, and then and then next is Zichichon because he can protect your unpossessed, and then next we have magicians left and right. Like, come on, it's pointless. We have, well, not we, but I have already gone through all the relevant spellcaster support in the Witchcrafter video, and there was a couple with the Gracekeepers video. So, you know, if you want tech options, go watch those videos, okay? That said, I'm going to show you the tech options I run and all the deck builds I run, and hopefully you get inspired to build your own deck builds from what I have. Yes, I am recommending you ignore the warning of Budget Carb Uncle, because I'm pretty sure he smokes crystal meth while I'm not looking, so he's probably not the best role model to take advice from. So first up is my take on the FP beatdown deck. Now fair warning, a lot of these decks are variation of FP decks. So, because, you know, it's just the best version of the deck to, to play. You know, this version of the deck is very straightforward. Make the link, make firewall exceed, equip it with burning visor. It's very straightforward, barely needs any brains to play, very flexible if you want to experiment. Well, like I did when I decided to put clear world into it. 
Now, is Clear World a good card? Probably not, considering it's a GDX Season 4 anime garbage card, but hey, what's a gimmicky tech for you without one piece of slightly playable garbage? Of course, Clear Vice Dragon is there to help stop the garbage field spell from affecting you, uh, but, you know, it's still not good, but I have fun with it when I do break it out against fandoms. Maybe you will too, but, you know, I would maybe bring something to drink if you aren't used to playing barely competent decks. Next up is an idea I nicked from a friend, which is Dogmatica Charmer. It's nothing too flashy, it's just running a basic package that's such as Punishment, while Ecclesia has some basic synergy with the archetype, thanks to her typing and defense stats. There's also optional sideboards featuring the Albaz Fusion and Albaz for budget super poly plays. And you can even have the level 8 Knight there, which is searchable off of Ecclesia if, it, if you just really want that as well. I personally think this is the best version of Charmers we will ever get until Konami gets their act together and give us some more support. Moving into a couple builds using familiar cards, here's my take on a Spellbook deck. Immediately not a good one. I still have no idea how to play, well, spell books. So if you do, feel free to modify what I have and share it in the comments. I would be, well, very interested in learning about the archetype. Moving into something I'm a little more confident in, True King, Vite. So this is just straight up table 700 levels of casual, but there's some synergy here, mainly because the True King spot the familiars, and I'm possessed does nothing I just because I just realized because there's no targets for it, so feel free to remove that and I don't know. Slap some Draco Slayers. Or is it true Draco? Whatever, just do that. Okay, I know I didn't touch on any real charmer decks. Like proper old school charmer. But like but like I said before, they aren't good. Flifix are just too slow these days. That's why I stopped trying to make ghost tricks work right now. Like, now, like if you seriously want to try to make it work, my recommendation is two offs of all the charmers, a bunch of prediction engine or prediction princess tech, and fill out the rest with stun cards. Nothing else to to it. So, you know, just have fun trying to make them work in this meta. I'll be looking forward to seeing. All those people who are trying to play OG Charmers on uh, the EDO Pro Simulator. That's going to be fun. Okay, let's get CS for a second. I know I've been making jokes and giving the deck a tough time, which it does deserve. But that's because I care about the deck. I was one of those people who actually voted for the deck when the structure deck polls were out. I thought Konami could fix the archetype, but obviously they couldn't. But it's not 100% their fault. I feel like they couldn't fix the archetype without escalating the card design philosophy by at least a decade. Could Konami do better for the archetype? God yes. I mean, the field cell could have been just way better, and they could have given us stuff that brings Lion and Dark to the fold. Like, come on. You just don't give us the subtle hint of some possible relation between these two cards, and they pretend they don't exist. With that said, Konami did give us some good stuff, from the Spirit Charmers Quick Play, to the usefulness of the new AP Familiar cards. He wasn't a complete screw-up with the Structure Deck, if you ask me. Charmers has always had it rough, but the Structure Deck did give us some hope for the Charmer fanbase, and I'm glad. But things had to be said about the archetype, and that's why I do this video. I, but, you know... I still gave you those tools, you can still learn about the deck, and play around with those decks. Now I'm just hoping we get our Dark and Light Charmer support, featuring more lore and sights to whatever this implies. Um, I wasn't allowed to sleep tonight with a conscious. Why? Well, here we go. <sighs> just out, nearly, nearly, nearly made the video out of date, but here we are. Still has the handcuff thing, the better of a that, please. <sighs> is is this link going to be good in Charmers? No, not until we get familiars. If they get familiar in this set, then sh sure. But, oh god. <sighs> I'm going to hold off doing a gimmicky light on this until we get the dark stuff. And then, well, we have to get dark. And then... Hopefully they're familiars, and AP familiars. 
that would be nice. I'm just glad then now finally acknowledging the existence of Lana and Dark. That's very nice. Can't wait to see more on it, but yes. Anyway, um, now I have to try to remember what I said in the last post it in the last oh, the old one. Um, all right. So the next Gimmicky Tech video won't be out for a while because I'm working on a personal project. I'm gonna be trying. I think I mentioned it in the podcast already because I'm recording yes. this on the same day we do the podcast. So I'm going to be doing a video essay, a proper video essay on a on a on um something. So that's probably going to be taking up most of my time going into February. <coughs> and then I don't know what I'll do when we get back. I want to do something a little bit newer. So maybe I'll finish off that Phantom Night script. Maybe I'll do Security Force if I feel comfortable with talking about what the company have. That also gives me an excuse to do an episode featuring stun cards and <coughs> yeah. <sighs> I don't know, but this is probably what I get for making another episode that's a bit like Archetype Archive. And I got the Vada curse, where if I talk about archetypes that don't get any support, they suddenly get new support just to torture me and pose haste. Uh, this is just I I'm, I'm I'm not chuffed. Not gonna lie, but uh, it's it's like sure if they did this a week after the video would have felt better but no it's exactly just before I was about to upload it so now I have to edit it and re-export it and not happy not happy <laughs> but anyway ugh. at least the card art looks nice alright see you next time guys and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed if you like what you've seen I uh, this is what happens when you don't sleep. Just subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. I, I promise you, even though these videos usually take a month to come out, they're worth it. They are.